All right, it's time to route the rear cavity for the electronics. And what I've done is I've located the positions of the volume and the tone knob where I want them on the front of the guitar. And I'm going to use a hand drill and drill straight through the body. And this is so that I can locate the routing template properly in the back. I can see the front, but I'm not routing from the front. I'm routing from the back. So I need some type of reference. And if you notice in my right hand, I've got the, I guess it's cast iron or steel piece off of a combination square years ago. I took to calling that piece thing, uh, like uh, off of, I think it's the Adams Family. <laughs> and thing helps me to drill straight. If you look, what I do, it's got a 90 degree, 290 degree, well no, it's got a 90 degree angle and a 45 degree angle. And I use the 90 degree angle to eye the drill and keep it centered and straight up and down as best as I can. Because I don't have a drill press, then I have to come up with creative th ways for drilling a straight hole. If the material is thin, you can drill a straight hole by hand without any problems. But drilling a straight th hole through an inch and three quarter or two inches worth of wood is difficult to do just by hand. So I use that as a guide. I have seen people use uh, pieces of wood, two by fours, all kinds of stuff to find that angle. I just, I have that piece on the combination square and it's convenient. And now I'm placing the template on the body to try to locate as good as I can where I want the cavity at and I'll take a pencil and mark an outline so that I know where that cavity is going to be. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take as large a forcing bit as I can find. This is one and a quarter inch. I have a one and a half or one and three quarters or seven eighths or something like that. But I don't know where it's at right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Forstner bit and I'm going to hog out as much material as I can, being careful not to go too deep. What I want to do is hog this material out and then I'll take a router and slowly sneak up on the depth that I want this cavity to be. And now I'm using that little ruler. I've got a little bit of tape on the shaft there. And I'll slide that little ruler up and check so that I can get an approximate leave the same depth in each of the holes that I'm growing so that I can get approximately as deep as I want to go without going deeper. And it's just a matter of hogging away as much as I can. Because you want to take small bites with a router and a router bit. And so now I've got as much as I can hogged out of it. And I'm going to take a router and set it to the depth of the cavity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly, in tiny little bits and pieces, take what's left in this cavity out, being careful not to go up to the line that I drew 
off of that template. I will finish it using the template so that I get the thing exactly the size I want. And now I've routed as much away as I can and I'm going to use some double sided carpet tape. And I'm going to carefully position this template so that it's exactly where I want it to be, exactly where I laid those lines out earlier. And then I'm going to press it down. And you want to press this down tight. You want to take your time with it. You want to put pressure on it. You don't want this to move whatsoever. And now what I'm going to do is I'm still at the same depth, but I'm going to cut this out completely so that it's proper size and matches the template that I've got and you'll see that I go very slow and I look often at my progress a router bit is probably a router in a router bit is probably the most dangerous tool that or at least one of the most dangerous tools that you'll ever use in woodworking. It's also if it slips and you don't know it it will destroy what you are working on in a split second so I always take my time and I'm very very careful and you see, actually, I'm not at full depth yet. I'm, uh, I'm adjusted so that the bearing on the top of the router bit or the bottom, depending on how you're using it, with a uh, handheld router, that's I would consider it a top bearing bit, but it's actually a bottom bearing bit meant to be used in a router table. But so I'm going to take it very easy and route this out so that it's made it. Then what I'll do is I'll pull this template off now and the router bit, the bearing on the router bit can ride on that wall that I just cut. So I'll make an adjustment to the depth so that the bearing rides on that instead of the template. You see me working on that here. One of the things you should do, and you should know, and I've said it before, this router is unplugged. Unplug the son of a gun. Make your adjustment, and then plug it in again. Don't play around with it. Well, actually, Right there, I did make that adjustment without unplugging it, which was a bad idea. That's not safe practice. You should be very careful when you do that. But you will see later on that I normally unplug it before I adjust anything on it. And you see right there, now I'm cleaning up the rest of that cavity to depth. Now... I'm making a, an adjustment to the depth so that I can go down a couple of sixteenths further in the route. And you see, it was unplugged that time. I try to always do that, but sometimes you forget. And then I gently lower that down into the cavity until it cuts to the depth that I want. And the uh, bottom of the router sits flat. And I'll go down. And I'll make successive passes till I get to the depth that I want. And with this, you see I've gotten to the uh, uh, walnut now. And I'm... I need to go an uh, eighth of an inch from the top and no further. And that leaves this area very thin, but I have a 
five-way or three-way. I haven't decided which yet. But a five-way or three-way strap type switch that I'm going to use to switch pickups. And it needs a half inch, or I'm sorry, an eighth an inch, somewhere between three sixteenths and one eighth of an inch thickness and no more. And this is like pucker factor 1000. <laughs> uh, because if you slip at all, you misjudge at all, it will go straight through that top. And then you're going to have a control plate on the back and one on the front. And now I'm making, I think this is the final depth of cut. There might be one more, but I, I believe this is the last one. If I could do this work by hand, precise enough, I would. But there are things, you'll see I use a router and I use a, a battery powered or a corded hand drill on some steps because that's just the best, easiest way to do those things. But I like mostly working with hand tools. And I will use them as much as I can. But there are certain things you really need precision for. Now what I'm doing is I'm drilling the holes for positioning the slot that has to be cut into the top of the guitar to receive that switch there by my left hand that's laying there on the bench. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ruler and a good sharp pocket knife. This is the knife that I use or the blade. I have several pocket knives that have a sheep's foot blade on it. But I use a sheep's foot blade as a marking knife in woodworking. I just find that it's ideal for that. And I'm just going to take, since the top is only about one eighth of an inch thick here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect those two one eighth inch drill bit holes with this knife and then I'm just going to make pass after pass with the blade until I actually cut this slide out. I've never done this before and I think the next time if I do this again that the next time I'll use like a 1 16th inch bit because I think the 1 8th was just a little bit too big I would prefer a little bit smaller slot and the next time or a little bit narrower slot and the next time if there is a next time because I really do not like the thickness that the cavity has to be at or that the top has to be at for this switch but you never know there you go anyway if I do this again I'll use like a 1 16th inch drill bit or a 3 32nd probably 3 32nd and then I'm kind of cleaning it up with a file And I'm just fitting it to see if it fits right, if it works right, if the slot is wide enough or long enough so that I can get every position of the switch. And it works just fine. And so what I'm going to do, the top is really thin. This is CA or super glue accelerator. It makes it cure faster. And what I'm going to do 
I'm going to do is because this top is very thin here, I'm going to flood this whole area with CA or super glue. And I'm going to flood it so much that you'll see that I pick up the guitar and kind of swish it around. That's how much super glue I put in the back of this, back behind this cavity because I want it to be as strong as I possibly can. You can see the super glues uh, slipped out of the holes and went all over the top and that's all right. Uh, I'll sand that down, scrape it down until it's gone uh, before I go to finishing the instrument. On the final sanding in preparation for finish work, I'll do that. That way I'm not sanding on that cavity. So what kind of knobs? This is the first set of knobs. I've got three sets of knobs. So this is set one and they will sit further down on those shafts. Uh, but right now I'm just placing them on there. And then I've got these knobs. These are knobs number two. And then what I could do is I could be really sacrilegious and put the Fender, or I'm sorry, Gibson-esque style top hat knobs on this instrument. Let me know what you think. Later.